We will begin our debrief by looking at the first question. Okay, so for the first question, you have a setup where the concentration of HCl to your left is actually 0.1 moles per dm cube. The concentration of HCl to the right is actually 1 mole per dm cube. You'll notice that uh, this setup is a little bit different from um, most of those that you have encountered because you have the same reagent for both half cells. The only difference is that the concentration uh, is different for both half cells. Okay, um, how do you go about approaching this question? It's actually similar to how you will approach an ordinary question. Okay, so if you take a look at the right hand side, you have SHE, so that's standard hydrogen electrode, uh, one more per dm cube, nothing very inspiring. Um, it will, if you, if you put it relative to a normal SHE, you'll be 0, 0.00, so there will not be any current flows. Okay. However, if you take a look on the left hand side, right, you realize that the concentration is actually lower than um expected. Okay. So that means that the reduction of H plus to H2 is not as favorable as compared to SHE. So on the left hand side, you would expect oxidation to favors. Okay, so I will expect oxidation to favors. If you expect oxidation to favors, that means that your hydrogen gas will be oxidized to H plus, and then the electron will actually flow from the left all the way to the right. Okay, so in that case, the first option is correct. This is an example of a concentration cell where if you look at the left hand side, the concentration of H plus will go up to about maybe the halfway point, maybe about uh, 0 0.5, 5 ish. And then for the right hand side, the concentration of H plus will drop also to around um, that value and then eventually no current will flow. Okay, so if you are interested to read out on this, you can read out on the concentration cell, although uh, it's not exactly in your curriculum. If you look at the second option, um, the E cell value decreases when ammonia is added to the right hand side of the half cell okay so um, what exactly is happening when you add ammonia is that um, ammonia will undergo acid base neutralization with H plus so some of the H plus we consume so that means that the total concentration of H plus on the right hand side will actually drop and when it drops uh, this actually signifies one thing um, because originally if you if you pit it against SHE, the value is about 0, 0.00. So when the concentration of H plus drop, you would also expect the overall E cell to actually decreases as well. Okay, because uh, the total concentration of H plus on both sides is now not as high as before. Okay, so in that case, uh, I will also give the second option a tick. For the third option, the E cell value remains the same when sodium chloride is added um, to the left. Okay, so the question to ask ourselves is what exactly is the role of sodium chloride? So sodium chloride, uh, Na plus doesn't do anything. Um, it's not a cation with high charge density. Okay, chloride also doesn't do anything because it's a conjugate base of a strong acid. So in that case, if you add sodium chloride, you're not going to ex expect hydrolysis. You remain as neutral. Uh, there won't be any shifting uh, of position or equilibrium because HCl is a strong acid that ionizes completely. So in that case, uh, if sodium chloride is not going to do anything, there's no change in the um, reduction potential value on on either side. So uh, I would expect the HCl to remain the same. So with that, option A seems to be the most viable option that I will pick for question 1. Okay. Next, let's move on to question 2. Question 2 is a calculation question that um, often appears in most of the assessment settings, so it would be wonderful if you are able to uh, know how to do a uh, question like this. Okay. Um, to be able to do a question like this, of course, the, the most important thing is to understand uh, what equation to use um, and of course you learn two very important equations um, which is the total amount of charge is actually equals to the current times time so this is very important and of course um, you can also relate to the total amount of charge by the number of moles of electron transfer multiplied by Faraday 
Okay, so in that case, if you are able to work around this equation, then everything will be wonderful because um, if you just manipulate around it, then uh, you can actually solve most of the problems. Okay, so let's take a look at the nature of the problem. Um, if you look at the equations, um, you are given an anode. Uh, the water is being oxidized to oxygen. Uh, for the cathodes, the CO2 is being reduced to methane. Okay, and the step of the question reads: If the process is 80% efficient, now um, this is a very important keyword that we need to realize: 80% efficient. So, um, how many hours are needed to produce one dm cube of methane gas? Okay, so uh, volume of methane gas is given when a current of 0.5 ampers is passed throughout the cell. Okay, now. Um, before we go about doing the question, we need to ask ourselves, uh, are we given the necessary information? Okay, so uh, first of all, we are given currents. Okay, so I is given, um, we are supposed to find T, so not an issue. Um, are we given the number of moles of electron transfer? Um, we are not given the number of moles of electron transfer, but we can easily calculate that. Um, for a very simple reason, because we are given the volume of methane gas um, released. So if you are given the volume of methane gas released, we can find out the number of moles of methane gas released. If you are able to find out the number of moles of methane gas released, we will be able to find out the number of moles of electrons that <coughs> carbon dioxide took in to actually get reduced to methane. So the relationship is actually 1 to 8. Okay, <coughs> and with that we can find out the number of moles of electron transfer. And Faraday is a constant. Alright, so in this case, one equation, one unknown, you can easily solve this. Okay, so let's try to do a bit of rearrangement. So um, in that case, um, P will be equals to the number of moles of electron transfer multiplied by Faraday divided by the current. Okay, so if you have heard me earlier on, what we need to do here is simply to Same produce first, so that's one over twenty-four. Okay, and then we um, need to multiply by eight, so that we get the total number of moles of electron transfer. Okay, and with that we need to multiply by Faraday, which we can easily get the value from the data booklet. Okay, and then we need to divide by uh, the currents. We are given zero point five zero. Okay, so at this stage, most of the students will just submit the scripts as it is for a free response calculation. Okay, but not to forget, you were told one important information. If the process is 80% efficient, so you need to um, take this into consideration. So you need to multiply by 100 over 80. Okay, and there is also another important consideration you're supposed to quote the values in hours, not seconds. Okay, so we need to divide by 60 multiply by 60 okay so um, with this I think you can straight away um, <coughs> look through all your options and you realize that A is the answer okay yep so um, I hope by going through question 2 in this format you will be able to see um, how to actually manipulate the equations Okay, and then uh, plug in the unknown as and when necessary. The next question we're going to go through will be question 3. Okay, so um, question 3 seems a little bit complicated. Uh, so you are given um, 4 half cells. 1, 2, 3 and 4. And each of the half cell, there is a metal uh, being dipped into one molar of the respective cations. Okay, so PQR is unknown. The only thing that we know is half cell 4, which is uh, copper, copper 2. Okay, so uh, you are given some data in a table. You were told that um, the half cells are connected in pairs, and then um, for each cell, the polarity of the electrode and the voltage generators are re recorded. So again, they are, they are just mixing up some of the pairs, and then um, um, they give you the value, or they record the value of the voltage. So, the next thing that we need to look at is um, how, how are we going to go about solving this? Okay, um, uh, again, the simplest way is to identify the anode and the cathode. Okay, so obviously this is an electrochemical cell. 
okay, which means itself is actually a battery that generates currents. So with that, then um, the positive electrodes. How 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 do you make it a positive electrode? So that's uh when uh, electrons is being consumed and electrons is being only only being consumed in the reduction process. So the positive electrodes Okay, so uh, similarly, negative electrodes is when electrons is being uh, produced, um, and electrons is being produced only in the electrode where it constantly undergoes oxidation. So this is actually the anodes. <coughs> okay, so um, with this in mind, the next thing is uh, can we try to solve what, with something that we are aware of? Okay, so if you take a look at half cells uh, one and four, um, we might want to just write equation to 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 solve it. So that um, it's more visual for us as well. So in this case, um, E cell, okay, is actually equals to um, E reduction. So um, what is being reduced? So this is um, P plus P, okay, uh, minus E oxidation. So the copper electrode is being oxidized, okay, and then you get uh, zero point four six. Uh, equals to um, an unknown P plus P okay minus 0 0.34 okay you get 0 0.34 from your data booklets okay and then um, from here you realize that your E cell oh, oh sorry not E cell um, the half cell for P plus P okay is actually um, equals to 0 0.80 volts okay now um, at this stage this value uh, might not seem very meaningful to to most of us if you haven't been revising for your electro cam so uh, it's okay let us go back to the data booklets um, let us try to recall or, or try to reason out um, what exactly does a positive or negative value mean to us? Okay, so let us take a look at two extreme examples that um, I can easily think of. Uh, can we look at um, sodium plus sodium um, versus nickel, 2 plus nickel? Okay, what is the meaning of negative 2.71 okay, versus negative 0 0.25? Okay, so um, in that case, you realize that, or if you can recall from your knowledge um, from secondary school, that um, Sodium is a way more reactive metal as compared to nickel. So if sodium is a way more reactive metal as compared to nickel, that means that um, sodium has an extremely strong tendency to be oxidized. Okay, so if it has an extremely strong tendency to be oxidized, yeah, that means that um, the electrons that it possesses on the surface, okay, um, it's very willing to actually lose it. So um, that actually kind of um, make it a very very reducing metal so normally we say that um, sodium is a more reducing metal um, let's say as compared to nickel in this case yeah well I mean nickel to nickel to um, well it's negative zero I mean nickel to nickel is negative 0 0.25 um, yes I mean nickels in terms of thermodynamics nickels still have some tendency to be oxidized to nickel too Yep, but in that case, definitely the tendency is not as strong as from sodium to sodium plus. Yep, so um, because of that, um, we normally draw the conclusion that the more negative the reduction potential is, okay, uh, the more reducing is the metal itself. Okay, we need to have this knowledge in order for us to rank. Okay, because later on you realize um, we are supposed to um, list the metals in order of increasing strength as a reducing agent so if you are not able to understand um, what we have said just now then we will not be able to rank them accordingly okay so i hope um, this actually give you a kind of like a snapshot on, um, what exactly we are supposed to do lah. okay so um, with that then uh, let, just just let me go back to this and then um, do a bit of comparison and um, then you realize where I'm coming from. So now you know that P plus P is uh, 0 0.80 volts. Um, copper to copper is 0 0.34 plus 0 0.34. Okay, so uh, if I were to ask you to actually make a comparison uh, between copper to between uh, copper and P, which is a more reducing metal, I think um, you can 
easily give me the answer that copper is the more reducing metal. Okay, I hope that um, makes a bit of sense to you. So um, the easiest way to do this question is actually to draw a, a number line. So uh, if I'm going to put P here, okay, I want to put copper here. Okay, and in this case, um, zero point four six. Okay, so that means that if I were to put uh uh P and copper kind of in a electrode setting that half cell setting, then uh P will be will be the positive electrode where you'll be reduced uh and then um copper will be oxidized. Okay. Uh if I put it in this way you realize that um the solving is gonna be a lot easier because if I'm gonna move on to the next one, um copper now becomes the positive electrodes. Okay? Now the positive electrode you notice is always on the left. And then Q is negative electrode. Uh positive 0 0.57. So now can I easily put Q here? And then this is just 0 0.57. Okay? Then um I'm gonna move on a little bit more quickly because um, things are slightly easier now. Then copper and R. Well R is here. Because um for R this whole thing is 1.10 Okay, so uh, I think once I write it out in this way, you can easily see that um, the more the metal is to the right, the stronger it is as a reducing agent. Okay, so um, <coughs> without even um, going on further, you can easily pick D as the option uh, for question 3. Question 4 is next that we are going to go through. Okay, so you have this particular um, setup with a copper 2, copper half cell on the left and a chromium 7, chromium 6, dichromate, uh, chromium 3 half cell on the right. Okay, so um, if you just do a quick look at this particular system, if you want, you can take a look at the data booklets. Um, so you have a, this is the dichromate chromium uh, 3 half cells and then um, you have a copper 2 copper over here okay so um, if you just do a quick look you will know that um, the cell that perform reduction is actually on the right so this is the cathode and the one that performed the oxidation is on the left so this is the anode okay so um, in this case your E cell will be equals to um, E reduction, which is the dichromate half cell, okay, minus E oxidation, which is the copper to copper half cell, okay. We need this particular information in order for us to um, move on with the choices, okay, in selecting the correct choices, okay. So the next thing that we need to look at is um, the choices we have. So the first thing, option A is replace copper with an alloy of copper and silver okay so now the first thing is an alloy is simply a mixture of copper and silver okay we need to be aware of that it's not a new product it's not a they are not chemically changed okay so we need to be aware of that so that means that um it still consists of copper and silver per se okay so that means that uh, copper retains its own density and hence concentration uh, silver retains its own density and hence uh, concentration the concentration of a solid doesn't change okay so if you replace it with uh, alloy of copper and silver and we take a look at the data booklet what's going to happen is that um, you realize that the reduction potential of silver plus silver which is 0.8 versus that of copper to copper which is 0.34 is actually bigger so that means that it is actually harder to oxidize uh, silver as compared to copper. So in, in, in that case, we're going to get a value of the E oxidation value to be larger as compared to copper to copper. So in that case, you would expect the effect of the E cell to decrease rather than increase. Okay, so in that case, option A is incorrect. If you look at option B, if you add concentrated sulfur acid to the reduction half cell, okay, so what's going to happen is that you're going to bump up the amount of uh, acid here. Uh, of course, it depends on how much you add, um, but for simplicity, you're just going to bump it up in, like, quite a bit. So you expect the fall reaction to predominate. If you expect the fall reaction to predominate, you expect the value here 
to actually goes up. Okay, so if we go back to the equations, if you expect the values to go up, um, so you expect this value to go up, this is fixed. So you expect the EMF to actually increase. Okay, but the choice road decreases. So in that case, it's, in, it's incorrect as well. Okay, so now, next thing we know, we want to look at is to look at option um, C and D. If you look at option C and D, you realize that um, for option C, you add sodium hydroxide to the oxidation half cell. Um, so if you if you look at the thought processes, it will be to to allow precipitation of copper hydroxide. Uh, and the precipitation of copper hydroxide will cause the concentration of copper two to actually decrease. If you add Water to the oxidation half cell, what you're going to expect is the concentration of copper 2, aqueous copper 2 will decrease as well. Okay, so in that case, uh, the change to C and D, okay, uh, will result in a similar change in the reduction potential of copper 2 copper. Okay, so if you go back to this, uh, if you look at the reduction potential of copper 2 copper, you realize that uh, when copper 2 gets diluted, position of equilibrium. So this uh, copper to copper reduction potential actually decreases. If the copper to copper reduction potential decreases and this uh, dichromate chromium uh, 3 remains the same, you expect the E cell actually goes up. So for both of this case, the E cell will go up. Okay, so if you look at other choices, the only one that kicks is actually option D. Okay, next we move on to question 5. Uh, if you look at question 5, um, what's the main catch? Okay, so you have a large current that passed through uh, copper 2 sulfate that was simultaneous liberation of the cathodes. So you are given um, a certain number of moles, um, X, okay, and then um, you are given a YDMQ of hydrogen gas. Uh, take note of this. TP, okay. So in that case, if you calculated the number of moles of uh, H2, it would be Y divided by 22.7. Okay. Now, um, what is uh, really, really important here is for us to realize that in order for us to produce this amount of hydrogen gas, uh, if, you, if you just go back to the half equations, you realize that you need two equivalent of the electrons. Okay, so in that case, uh, the total number of moles of electrons I need, in that case, I will need to multiply this value by 2 times 2. Okay, then uh, similarly for the number of moles of copper, you know that uh, to produce one equivalent of copper, you need to take in two equivalent of electrons. Okay, so in that case, uh, this will be 2x. Okay, so I need to select an option where uh, the number of moles of electrons that to reduce copper 2 is 2x, so option D takes, and then the number of moles of electrons to reduce H plus to H2 is y over 22.7 times 2. So in this case, only option D uh, fits the bill. The next question we look we are going to look at is question 6. Okay, so um you have an electrolysis setup. Um so um again on the left hand side you have an alloy consisting of X, Y, and Z, and then you have a solution containing uh, X and Y sulfates. On the right hand side you have an inner electrode which is platinum. Um it would be good to actually write down the sign of the electrode, um, although it's, it may not be necessary. So uh, as per all electrolysis, the left hand side must be the anode because um oxidation is taking place here and the right hand side must be the cathodes because reduction uh, is taking place here. So you are actually using an external power supply to to drive an otherwise non-spontaneous reaction. In this case it's actually the oxidation of the relevant metals. Okay. Um if you look at some the story it reads along the line um, um after some time X and Y in the alloy decreased. Uh, so that means X gets oxidized, Y gets oxidized. The unreacted Z was uh, found at the bottom, so that means that Z is the most unreactive metal. If Z is the most unreactive metal, that means that the reduction potential of Z will be the highest. With that, if you straight away zoom into your option, you realize that option 2 is rubbish because uh, option 2 writes reduction potential of Y2 plus Y is the highest. Okay, so uh, that makes elimination quite easy. Okay, then the next thing is uh, you can either choose to work on option 1 or option 3, but um, in this case, since I'm already at 2, I just 
look at three because it's just below and then uh, it reads polarity of the battery is reverse H2 is produced at the platinum electrodes um, okay so what exactly is happening here is that um, uh, the platinum electrodes the cathode so reduction takes place reduction of what reduction of water so in in that sense if I reverse the uh, the battery you would expect um, the platinum to become the anode so what is being oxidized in this case uh, you can't expect platinum to be oxidized because uh, you expect the reduction potential to be of a very high value so in that case uh, the next best uh, possibility will be the oxidation of water to oxygen so because of that definitely H2 is not produced okay so option 3 is wrong so if 2 is wrong 3 is wrong 1 has to be correct but that's kind of rubbish because we have to through all the options to ensure that we're on the right track if you look at option one is a bit weird because they say that the x2 plus x reduction potential is uh, more positive than that of h2 h2 is a bit weird to have that um but if you if you simply if i simply just give you some examples it might it might help you to actually see how how can we actually go about solving this problem assuming that xyz it's um something like uh, say copper nickel and silver so for example so silver will be the most unreactive metal which fell below as the anode sludge okay so if you look at the reduction potential of copper uh, copper to copper and then uh, nickel to nickel um, copper to copper is about 0 0.34 volts nickel to nickel is about uh, minus 0 0.25 volts uh, uh, both of them definitely more positive as compared to the um the water hydrogen electrode so uh, over here, water hydrogen electrode is minus 0 0.83 volts not sure why this option is in but but yeah we we'll expect if the electrolysis were to take place uh, definitely um the reduction potential it's maybe hovering uh slightly below zero or slightly um, uh, above zero kind of scale so i would uh, give option one a tick as well for question seven uh if you if you read the question the most important part of this question is regarding etching uh they mentioned about the etching of copper objects uh, can be done chemically okay so what exactly is happening here is that um, some form of oxidation of copper takes place okay so um, well I mean you are probably looking at from um, copper zero to copper two plus yeah so uh, question is probably cannot be used as etching uh, chemicals so uh, basically you want to oxidize copper to copper two plus which is uh, positive 0 0.34 volts okay so uh, in that case all I need to do is to find a pair which gives me a reduction potential more positive than 0 0.34 volts in order for etching to take place okay so the, the one that um, don't follow this criteria will be the chosen answer for this okay so um, the first one we are looking at is uh, dichromate um, um, H plus so uh, this this is a pre pretty common reagent it's, it's right here so it's actually 1.33 volts so this is 1.33 volts okay for iron 2 um, the only equation we have here involving iron two, because copper needs to be oxidized to copper 2 so obviously iron 2 must be reduced so we are really looking at this which is negative 0 0.44 okay so of course um, in this case B is likely to be the answer but we can check the rest for iron 3 iron 2 um the next page is 0.77 so it's more positive than 0.34 so that actually can take that can take place um manganese 3 plus so we have manganese 3 plus to manganese 2 plus possibly 1.54 so of course etching can take place okay then um yep so b will be the answer so question 7 is pretty straightforward next will be question 8 another calculation question so um same story uh, student carry out experiment involving electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate so, um, in cell A and then um, aqueous chromium 3 uh, sulfate in cell uh, B. Okay, so uh, again, um, if you look at the battery, um, let us write the sign first um, plus minus, so you would expect the left hand side and then the cathodes to be on the right hand side. Okay, so um, Let's focus on the story now. They, it reads, um, given that 6.35 grams of copper was deposited at electrode X, uh, at the end of the experiment, what is the mass of chromium uh, deposited at electrode Y? So, of course, the main idea, the main concept that you're supposed, supposed to employ in using this question is really the number of moles of electron transfer on both sides must be 
um, the same. So in this case, um, uh, similar to the earlier question, uh, you know that Q is equals to pi T, which is equals to the number of moles of electron transfer multiplied by Faraday. So we can straight away look at the number of moles of electron transfer, which is equals to I T divided by Faraday. Okay. Um, but do we really need this equation to to help us um, solve the whole uh, the whole problem? So of course, um, the answer is uh, no, because we are we simply need, need need to calculate the number of moles of electron uh, that is being uh, transferred, and we can get this particular data from the the mass deposited at electro x by comp. Okay, so in this case, um. Multiply by two. Okay. Uh, then after that, the next thing that we are um, probably going to look at is um, for the other electrodes we have chromium three plus. Okay. So chromium three plus will be reduced. Yep. So um, in that case, if you want chromium three plus to be reduced to chromium zero. So the number of moles of um, electrons to chromium zero will be three is to one. Okay. So um, in 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 that case, um, in order for me to um, calculate the the mass, okay, the mass of chromium, in that case, I will have to take the exact same number because this represents the number of moles of electron transfer. Okay. But remember that um, in terms of stoic Q, Instead of two is to one, now it's one is to three, so I need to multiply this by one third. Okay, then from here I need to multiply this by fifty two, which is the relative atomic mass of chromium. Okay, if you uh, punch the calculator, you should be able to get B as the answer. Okay, so that will be for question number eight, which is pretty decent as well. Okay, so the final question is is nine. Um, if you if you read the story, uh. Yeah, sewer plus sewer half cell connect to copper to copper uh, half cell with the circuit completed by a salt bridge. Okay, so that's fine. What which are following um, is true. So basically, uh, look at your data booklet. You calculate the E cell. So E cell is E reduction. So you get 0 0.80 for the sewer plus sewer minus E oxidation. Um, you get uh, copper to copper. So you get 0 0.46 volts. Okay, so uh, the first option seems to make perfect sense. So I'll give that a, a pick. Next option, dissolving sodium hydroxide in the copper two in the copper half cell will make the cell potential um, more positive. So again, uh, same story. If you add sodium hydroxide in, um, copper two hydroxide will be precipitated out. So in this case, uh, position of, of equilibrium of copper two copper will shift to the left. Okay, so the reduction potential of copper two copper will become less positive because uh, of the fact that um, the fall reaction is now less spontaneous. So in that case, your E cell okay, will become more positive. Okay, so, so in that case, um, the second option seems to uh, make the pick as well because um, the pathway is more positive for the cell potential, so that's, that's fine. Okay, so the final option we are looking at is dissolving sodium hydroxide in the silver half cell. So again, same story. So in this particular half cell, position of equilibrium of zero plus zero shift to the left. Um, reduction potential become less positive. So a less positive value minus a fixed value, you get a less positive uh, cell potential. So again, let's check it carefully. Less positive. So the third option ticks as well. So in that case, I will pick all the options, which is option A.